This is a short guide on how to install Pebble on your Windows system. So Pebble is an experiment, a psychology experiment programming language that includes uh, hundreds of tests and your ability to write your own tests to understand human decision making, problem solving, vision, things like that. And uh, to get the system, you download it from pebble.sourceforge.net. If you go there, it'll give you a couple options here to download. And the latest, there's two latest versions for Windows. So we'll start with the installer for Windows. If you click on this, you'll come to this page, and then it will eventually download something for you. <coughs> and um, so I'm going to... See, save and then view downloads. I, I've already have it saved and so if, if I were to um, run that you have to run this as a administrator so if you don't have administrator access you won't be able to run it um, and it will tell you a default location and you should Put it there unless you really can't um, because it'll make everything much easier. Um, it does it shouldn't take very long to install. And that copied your files to that C program files. And it shows the GPL2, which is what Pebbles was released under. And it made a link on the start menu, which I guess you can't really see, and maybe if, if I go over here, and it should have done, I had the ability to, made a pebble to uh, menu here, which I should be able to run it from, and it started on a different window and it will cr open up um, the launcher. Now, actually, the first time, uh, it creates a, when it's launched the first time, it creates a folder and copies a bunch of stuff into it, including the manual and a bunch of, and all the battery files and things like that. I'm gonna delete this and show you what happens if I run this again. Now it's gone, and this is what would happen if you were running it for the first time. You will get this window, which, which tells you where it wants to install things, um, and, and where it's looking for its files from. If it yes, it will do this copying behind the scenes, and this takes um, it takes a little while to copy all the files, but it shouldn't. This is a pretty fast computer, and it was just a few seconds. But sometimes on an older computer, if there's a lot of file checking, this can take even up to a minute or so to complete. And so that uh, did all the copying, and then it stops, and you have to run Pebble again. But you can see how in my Documents folder that file I deleted has reappeared. So now one last time, if I run Pebble to, and in fact, maybe I want to drag it down here so I can launch it more easily. Um, it's created this launcher and there's a lot of information on here, how to cite it and everything. And it gives a little, area to enter a passcode. This is a password I give you if you donate to the uh, Pebble project uh, via the Superior Ideas crowdsourcing site, or if you help develop or translate tests or contribute normative data to the project or things like that, I'm happy to give this out. Um, there's very little the password does other than bypass the screen, um, so you, if you don't um, have the password you can use it without the password and it'll, 
it'll take you to this screen. And the only other thing that the <coughs> password does is it permits you to create the custom launcher, which I have a, a example of how to use in another video. So this is the launcher, and it's sort of the main place where you can navigate tests and that and um, and uh, do settings. I have another tutorial that shows you about all these settings. Uh, some of the easy things there are to do is you can go to the website, you can open a copy of the manual, which is a PDF document. So that's an easy way to get access to the PDF document. Browse around in the folder, and really it will point and start in this folder here. And so if you have a new test you want to develop or want to move things around, you can put it in this folder and then it will be easy to access when you run tests. Um, and some of these will open a web browser that will take you to specific websites. And here's how to cite. So that's uh, just a basic overview of doing the install. If you have uh, access to um, an, an administrator account on your computer, now sometimes that's not easy to do. And especially if you're on a university computer, you may need to get someone to install it and they might um, not want you to, to or have different procedures you have to go through in order to get the installation permissions. So an alternative is the standalone version. And I downloaded the standalone version as well, and that's it was available on the main page. If we go back here, um, it's sometimes I call it portable, or sometimes I call it standalone. This is a way of having the whole Pebble package run without installing it in your program files, but just um, on your desktop or your documents folder, and the um, now, if you have a computer that's highly locked down, they may um, not permit you to do this either. There may be ways of preventing executables from running from within these areas. So, but this is a workaround that works for a lot of people who can run executable um, on their desktop but can't install things. It's just a little less convenient to use, but it's also um, very foolproof. So we've you know, what we've sometimes done is put this on a USB drive and gone into labs and just um, run it even off the USB drive on labs that we only have access to log in and don't have any other access to in a new location or something like that. So if you download that, let's see, I guess it's going to be, I don't know how to find. I will download it again, the portable version. <coughs> and so you want to save this somewhere on your computer. You don't open it directly. So save it. It's going to be a zip file. And I'll go to view downloads. There we go. And here's a copy of it. The, the most recent version in November 2017 is beta 6. And the different betas have all improved little things about this. There's a lot of tricky things to get right about if you have spaces in your usernames and things that meant a lot of different versions. But this one is pretty much the uh, most improved version. And in fact, if you, I guess if you open the beta 6 zip, it's called beta 5 because there's very few changes between beta 6 and beta 5. So if you open the zip file, you can't run directly from here. Don't run directly from here. Take this folder and copy it somewhere like your desktop. And it's now it's has to unzip all of this, so it takes a few minutes to do that. And it says it's taking about three minute, three and a half minutes to do. I don't think it's actually going to take that long, but maybe it will. And let's see, so I have 
here on my file. Uh, so I already had this somewhere, so part of the reason it took so long is because it was doing all the comparisons. So we will just replace everything and um, it will make copy, copy over everything I had in that folder already. <coughs> and now it's going a lot faster. So the advantage, let's see if we can open this and see. Uh, we won't try it until it completely finishes, this, but um, this will include the battery and the other files that appear in in the in the documents folder. But you but it will everything will be encapsulated within this folder, so you don't need to have this folder in documents in order for this to run. It'll be a completely separate installation. And in fact, for various reasons, sometimes my lab computers will have a couple of different versions of this that each student will go run their own test from just to keep it all separated. They have something working and they don't want to um, mess with someone else's, so they have their own version and then it's all encapsulated within it. If you have just one test or something you're doing though, you can customize this. So, you know, by default it's 50 or 80 megabytes and if you're doing one task, you can go delete all the tasks you don't care about from here to have a much more streamlined thing so that you could save it and archive it for so you know exactly what you have the code that was used to operate it. So this runs through this bat, <coughs> bat, bat file, this dot bat file. And if you have your settings different so you can't see the three letter extension, it might just say run pebble, but it should have some type of little uh, icon that looks sort of like this, and if you hover over it'll call it a Windows batch file. So if I double click on this, it doesn't do that whole installation routine, but I do get this first screen. Again, you could, if you have the password, you can go through this, and if not, you wouldn't. Um, you can just bypass it by using without password. And again, you get the same screen. So it's the same program. Now this is going to save I'll navigate to um, to scripts and things like that, but within wherever I um, within wherever I want to save this, and so it's handy to keep this on your desktop or in your documents folder or even on a USB drive, and just plug it in. And oftentimes you can run something off the USB drive directly. Um, without having to install anything on your computer. And so that is a quick guide to two ways of installing and using Pebble on Windows.